year. That decision slashing 1.3 million barrels from the global market. I asked former New Jersey governor and GOP presidential candidate Chris Christie about this yesterday. Watch. This is a total Biden failure, right, in two respects. One, cutting domestic oil production and making us much more susceptible to moves like this by the Saudis and the Russians. Two, he has ruined our relationship with Saudi Arabia. If, if he had had a better relationship with the Saudis, he, they wouldn't be making this deal with Russia. Joining me now is Red Apple Group Chairman and CEO John Katsimatidis. John, your reaction uh, to this and the blame that Chris Christie is putting on President Biden for this mess? Well, it's much, much more complicated than that, Cheryl. Uh, it's, uh, we're fighting, like I said previously, world war, economic world war. Um, the uh, parts of our world, uh, Russia and uh, the Arab nations, the OPEC nations, they want $90 oil, and they have $90 oil. Uh, two months ago, it was $68, and uh, we were here talking about that, that prices could go down. Um, there's another thing, there's another secret going around that nobody talks about. There's been three refinery uh, fires in three weeks. Have you seen it any place? Have you seen it in the Washington Post, in, in the New York Times, in, in the New York Post? No. Uh, three major refinery fires in Texas, Louisiana in the last three weeks, and suspicion—I'm not going to point fingers, but suspicion, suspicion it could be terrorism. So you have uh, a, a problem there that's going to raise prices. You have a problem where, where Russia needs the money. They, they want their billion dollars a day that they were earning when it was $100 a barrel. To, to wage their war in, in uh, Ukraine and in Africa, because it's the, not the French Foreign Legion anymore, the Russian Foreign Legion. The old Wagner Group is now the Russian Foreign Legion. Well, let me ask you about the and oil there's price one more thing. Though. Okay, okay. Biden is going to Alaska. And what is he going to do in Alaska? That's He's going to cut production. I was just going to ask you about that, John. That's so exactly what I was going to say. There's a world the, the economic the war going on. And you know who's going to suffer? The American consumer, the American people. We're moving wealth from North America to other places. Mm -hmm. and, and I just want to let our viewers know really quick what we're talking about. He and I are on the same page, but the Biden administration abruptly canceled seven oil and gas leases up in Alaska's Arctic National Wildlife Reserve. So this was yesterday. This was Deb Holland. President Trump had approved them, and then they were supported by wine righteous stakeholders, lawmakers, Native Alaskans. And so this, again, I, I guess this goes back to what Chris Christie was saying, is that this is President Biden's fault that we're in this position, that we're in now globally with oil. President Biden, if he opens up production in North America, you could have $65 oil, inflation goes away, and we don't have to have the Fed and Powell raise interest rates where he's going to destroy everybody. I want to ask you about politics as well. I know you're game for that discussion as well this Well, morning. I'm game for anything. You're you always know. game for anything. That's why I like you. Uh, the second GOP debate, we're going to be hosting it right here on Fox Business, as everybody knows. We are less than three weeks away from that, uh, from that right now. Right now, we've got that have qualified for the stage. You got Chris Christie, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Tim Scott. Missing from that list is the former president, President Trump. There was a recent CNN poll that showed that Republican support for the former president is still strong. 52% of Republicans and Republican leading independent voters, they're standing by him. Less than half say they're seriously concerned about the criminal charges, John. Well, I spoke to Rona McDaniel the other day from the uh, GOP. She expects nine people on stage on, in September. And, uh, uh, and you know what I tell all my friends? Look, I know uh, uh, President Trump for for uh, 40 years, 45 years, and, and I don't see any of those nine that are capable of hitting a knockout punch to him. And uh, now, who's capable? I mean, it's like the junior varsity. Um, the, so the question is, you know, what I tell my friends and what I tell when people ask me, let things sort themselves out. You know, he can go into federal court tomorrow and some federal court judge could say, 
We're going to lock you up. Let the voters well, we're gonna the voters lock you speak. up. This, is, this yeah. is my concern, is there's a big difference between the primary election and the general election. And most of the polls that show Trump versus Biden in a general election matchup show that they're either in a dead heat or Trump is significantly behind Biden, in large part because independent and swing voters are very concerned about the criminal charges against him. There was a recent AP poll that asked voters to describe the first the, the leading presidential candidates, and voters called Trump corrupt and dishonest. That is how the American public sees the former president. So this is the problem is that Republican voters might be staunchly behind him, but does that translate to a general election win? Very, very hard. Very, very hard because of uh, uh, most of the media is against him. Um, if I was picking a CEO and it was my company, the world was my company, I would rather have uh, President Trump in charge than President Biden. Uh, President Biden, the American consumer, has lost in every way. The, the borders are open and running wild. They're destroying American cities, okay? Uh, say what you want to say about Trump, but I'd rather have him on my side than President Biden. John, are, are we running a risk moving forward with President Trump as the, the GOP nominee, given the fact that there are, there's a growing number of states that are trying to use the 14th Amendment to disqualify him from that state, and when you're disqualified from states, you can't get those electoral votes? Well, absolutely. That's why we said, what did I say at the beginning of my conversation? Let things sort themselves out, uh, because uh, things could, so many things could happen in the next uh, six months that will decide factors. I don't know if, if President Trump is going to be the nominee. I mean, some federal judge could just put him in jail. Yeah. And there, there doesn't seem to be, you know what I'm afraid of, uh, Cheryl? Hmm. There's no rule of law in our country right now. I was going to ask you about crime because you, no and I all, you and I always talk about New York City crime all the time. And Eric Adams is at it again. I know that you have a relationship with him. But New York City, we did report here, luckily, one of the safest Labor Day weekends. But there's worries about these migrants. It's out of I? control. Yeah, no, and look at the New York Post cover. The New York Post, it's, you know, 41 people have been arrested down at the Roosevelt since it became a migrant shelter. New York City schools, today's the first day of school in the city. And look at the post cover right there.